Hello, young people. This video is going to be about solving the heat transfer equation. I know you've got homework on that. When you look at a word problem, first thing you want to do is find the givens. Highlight the givens with one color. Please actually highlight. It's worth your time. Highlight the givens with one color and your unknown with a different color. So I'm looking for numbers, 230. I'm also looking for units, J. J stands for joules. What's joules? Heat. Joules is heat. It's transferred to water. The temperature of the water started out at 78 degrees Celsius and increased to 85 degrees Celsius. The specific heat of water is 4.184. Oh, look at that weird unit. Remember, weird unit means heat capacity, not heat. What is the mass of the water? All right, you highlight it. Good for you. Now let's do the, you know it, guster. In heat problems, our really our only strategy is use the equation to find the answer. It's just one strategy. So we don't really need to worry too much about the strategy part of the guster. But let's go ahead and do the givens and the unknowns. Take the time to make a list. If you don't, maybe you'll get it right, but maybe you won't. If you take the time, you're going to get it right every time. So the givens. We have three givens here, right? We have... 230 joules, that's equal to heat, that's Q, remember the symbol for heat is Q, for reasons surpassing understanding. Then we have these two temperatures, right? I know I'm going to subtract them, I know that that's going to be my delta T. We do that whenever we have two temperatures. Why don't I do 85 minus 78 since 85 is larger? 85 minus 78. That's equal to 7. I can just leave it that way, though. It's fine. That's my delta T. Okay. I have 4.184, weird unit, joules per gram degree Celsius. And that, again, not heat, is heat capacity, Cp. Great. I made a list of my givens. That's the G from the guster. Now let's do the unknown. The unknown is mass, and we measure mass with grams, right? Good. Now I need my relationship. And again, since the only thing that we're doing here is just that one equation, we only need one relationship, and we can kind of skip over the strategies part. I wouldn't recommend that for stoichiometry. Anyway, here's the Q equation. Q equals M times Cp times delta T. I call it the Q equals M cat equation because the delta kind of looks like an A. It's not really an A, it's a delta. It means change, it means a change in temperature. But there's our equation. Here's the problem though. Our unknown is not Q. Our unknown is M. Do you see how our equation has Q all by itself over here? The equation is solved for Q. We have to change that. We have to do some algebra. Please don't try to just plug numbers in. Some people get it right, but a lot of people don't. Trust me on this one. I've been doing this for a while. Let's massage this equation. Let's finesse it before we try to plug numbers in. I'm going to do that over here. Q equals M times CP times delta T. I need to get rid of the Cp and the delta T. How do I do that? When everything is multiplied together, how do you get rid of something that's there and you want to get rid of it? You have to divide both sides by the same amount or the same variables. In this case, we're going to divide by Cp and at the same time, we can divide by delta T. So we're going to divide by Cp times delta T. All of that in the denominator. Because when something's in the numerator and in the denominator, it cancels out. So the CPs cancel out and the delta Ts cancel out. Those are just variables. So just like we learned in stoichiometry, those variables can cancel out if you divide 
equation 5m. If I do it on the right, I got to do it on the left also. So I'm going to put CP delta T right there. And so my equation becomes this one. Do you see how I have M is the only thing on that side that didn't cancel? Everything else canceled out. So I can actually get rid of it. Everything else canceled. Let's clean that up a little bit. M is the only thing left. So that's why I can rewrite my equation now. M is solved on the left-hand side. Q divided by CP delta T on the denominator. Now I can plug my numbers in. When you plug your numbers in, this is what it looks like. 230 goes in for Q. I got that from right up here. All I did when, I, when you make a list, all you got to do is find your Q and go, oh, there it is. And you plug in your 230. And then... There's my CP, see it? Put that one right there, 4.184. And then my delta T, like I said, that's seven, right? So if you were to take 85 minus 78, you could actually do that in your calculator ahead of time or in your head ahead of time and plug that in right here. You could just put seven right there. But you can also, your calculator is good at this stuff. So as long as you use parentheses, you can put that in there in the denominator and do 85 minus 78, it'll be fine. And finally, then, you can just hit enter, and your calculator knows. The final answer here is 7.85 grams. How do we know it was grams? If we look back at our unknown, we knew that we were solving for mass, so therefore, we must be using grams. Make sure that you put grams in your final answer. The only other thing I want to say about this for you is... Whenever you're solving for M, you're going to end up with Q in the numerator and CP delta T in the denominator. If you were solving for, like, let's say CP instead, once you do the algebra, you're going to get, I'm going to put it right here, you're going to get CP equals Q in the numerator divided by M delta T in the denominator. Because it's always going to be the two variables that you don't need that you divide out and put in the denominator. If we're solving for delta T instead, you're going to end up with Q divided by MCP. So do you see the pattern here? Q always ends up in the numerator if you're solving for one of the other three variables other than Q. Make sure you do the algebra first before you do the arithmetic. All right, folks, we'll check in with you later. Good luck.